In this last week, um, we've lost a couple of um, UH Manoa faculty. Um, John Mady, who's an internationally re renowned pioneer of the uh, free electron laser, and um, Noah L. Warner, a longtime member of um, Hawaiian language, who really pioneered internationally some of the ways we teach Hawaiian language. And um, But yesterday, um, we lost uh, another member of the UH family, uh, Representative Mark Takai. Um, in many ways, he represents the best of what we're all about. Um, public school graduate, attended UH Manoa on a swimming scholarship, uh, earned two degrees here, was active in um, student government. In fact, he's a past uh, president of ASUH, where most people believe he really developed his interest in service and politics. He was the editor of Kaleo, the UH Manoa student newspaper. And when he left UH and went into public service, he, he never forgot what UH means to the state. And he continued that in the state house and where he served as high red chair. And in Congress, where even in um, the times that any of us from UH would visit his office, he was always concerned about, interested in promoting UH as one of his main interests, knowing how important we are to the state. And, and I think um, the two losses we suffered, plus, plus Mark yesterday, um, really remind us of the different ways in, U in which UH touches our, our faculty, touch the world, our state, and our students change our state and the world, and it's something um, for all of us to reflect on. I know we'll all miss all three of them. Um, for the first time, after many requests from former Chair Moore, um, I finally produced a written summary of some of the things I wanted to share with the board. Um, so in that sense, I'll be a little bit briefer since you have them in writing and they are part of the public record as well. Um, last year, last fall, the board passed a resolution asking for the development of an integrated system-wide academic and facilities plan, really intended to help us understand, um, particularly on, on Oahu with the emergence of UH West Oahu, uh, with ample land, um, what programs we expect to see continued and growing at UH Manoa, what programs we expect to see continued and growing at UH West Oahu, but also what is the role of the community colleges within our system and what's the role of UH Hilo. We have uh, a number of distinctive institutions. Um, Vice President Dixon is leading a new approach to academic planning and she's working most closely with our four um, academic unit heads, Manoa Community Colleges, Hilo and West Oahu. Um, to develop what we're calling positioning statements, really intended to share what the emphasis of each of our academic units is, and, and this is the difficult part, what it isn't. And um, there is a tendency of institutions to expand to do more um, for passionate members within the community, inside the university and out, to want everything, everywhere, and um, that's a resource challenge for us today that I think everyone agrees this institution can no longer do. So I, I've shared with you um, some sense of where we are. Um, we are starting with the academic mission, that the academic mission and um, the, um, the hard decisions we make about academic mission within the UH system do need to drive uh, our facilities planning that said, that academic <coughs> positioning does need to be realistic about the physical space available on each of our uh, campuses as well. So it's a challenging activity. Uh, it's not scheduled for this meeting, but uh, Vice President Dixon is prepared to present to the um, Academic Affairs Committee, however that incarnates for the current year um, next month at its first meeting. And I think we'd have a deeper conversation then at the same time, we are um, doing some work to understand our facilities, capabilities, and challenges as well. Um, the second topic I wanted to me uh, mention was the, uh, where we are with the reorganizations of administrative support functions. 
Um, you'll recall that uh, when uh, we brought forward the recommendation supported by WICHE, that the role of the UH President and the UH Manoa Chancellor are indeed two separate roles, uh, the board uh, requested um, an aggressive reorganization uh, that if, if that was going to proceed that we needed to um, perform some administrative consolidations to reduce um, administrative costs, much as what we heard requested by uh, some of the student testi testimony today. Um, you have already approved the uh, consolidation of uh, research support functions. Uh, you did that over the spring, so the Office of Research Compliance is now uh, alongside export controls in the Office of Research Services under the uh, leadership of the system Vice President for Research and Innovation. Uh, proposals have been drafted for the other areas that I discussed with you in January, human resources, communications, facilities, and construction. Some discussion is underway, but our uh, policies and procedures call for consultation with affected groups, including faculty senates. So that consultation will begin um, when uh, everyone returns to action for the fall semester. We do anticipate um, being able to complete those this calendar year. So they will come forward to you um, after consultation and uh, amendment as appropriate in accord with that consultation. Um, Third, a quick update on the chancellor searches. Uh, we do have open chancellorships at both UH Manoa and UH West Oahu. We have hardworking search committees that have agreed to work over the summer. Um, over the summer, the commitment is to screen the applications that have been received, continue to screen them as they come in. This is an open recruitment until the positions are filled. Um, in general, the process is that the search advisory committees will be conducting after screening the applications, they will conduct Skype interviews uh, to uh, take those down to a short list, bring to me a short list for uh, consideration to invitation to the campuses for visits, and then provide a recommendation of candidates who they believe to be suitable with strengths and weaknesses. Um, I am optimistic with the, their commitment to work over the summer uh, that we will be able to have candidates on campus early in the semester and depending on availability, have two new chancellors on board at the beginning of the spring semester. That is my goal. Um, every search has a different rhythm and different things can happen. But again, the searches are open, so if you know of great candidates for these two positions, let us know. But we do have large pools for both that the committees are actively screening um, uh, right now. Um, the fourth item that I mentioned in my written report is the Regents and Presidential Scholars Program, so I won't uh, review that in gory detail. This was an initiative of the Regents, I think probably close to 20 years ago. Um, these are our premier internal institutional scholarships. The Regents scholarships are awarded to uh, 20 freshmen, the Presidential Scholarships to 10 juniors. Uh, this is in each year. And um, a few years ago, because we were emphasizing transfers, we uh, created an emphasis for the Presidential Scholars to recognize transfer students from the community colleges moving into our four-year campuses, uh, but they are not exclusively for transfer students. Um, they receive a full tuition waiver, uh, a stipend, and a travel grant. Uh, and this comes, this is one of the things we fund out of the legacy endowment that we report on each year. I will say that recently we have also been raising money through the UH Foundation to add additional regions and scholar, uh, presidential scholarships. Um, and we would welcome support. You'll, those of you who are attending the dinner tonight, I hope most of you uh, will meet the students and their families. Um, and it's a pretty um, amazing time to see um, what this means to them uh, as we keep our best and brightest from Hawaii here at uh, UH at our universities. Um, finally, just a couple of really quick things. Um, one is um, we're starting to see the payoff of our early college program. So um, we do not yet have a graduate from a high school who has graduated with an associate de degree at the same time. But I will note that we have a homeschooled graduate on uh, Molokai who graduated with an associate degree. And we also have a number of graduates from charter schools, um, and in particular on Hawaii Island, who have graduated from charter schools uh, with certificates from Hawaii Community College. 
Again, this gives them a head start on college um, because they haven't paid for those credits. Uh, so it increases financial affordability, but the data also tells us in Hawaii and uh, throughout the country that this is a path to increasing enrollment and increasing uh, college graduation. So we're committed to continuing to try to expand that program, uh, working closely with Hawaii P20 and the Department of Education. Um, in terms of continuing to uh, identify sources of financial aid, uh, depending on when we finish today, I will be participating in a photo op this afternoon, uh, accepting a check for about $1.2 million from Kamehameha Schools for support for UH, uh, our university students coming out of Kamehameha Schools, including a number of orphan and indigent, indigent students that's part of their mission uh, to provide a full cost of education, which is something we generally have not been able to do in the past. Um, so it's an interesting commitment that we've made for 100 students uh, statewide for a pilot project to see if we can, uh, with full support, get students out in four years. And there are some academic support wraparound as well with that program. Um, so it's something we're committed to doing and continuing to project <coughs> fundraise for it as well. Um, to that end, uh, Donna Vucinich, the president of the UH Foundation, will be here next month to do um, an annual report on last year. But I do want to let you know that um, they did make the $66 million target for the last fiscal year. Um, that was the target. Um, last year we did not have one of the major gifts, the so-called um, eight-digit gifts that we have enjoyed uh, in the past two years. But $66 million is a very good number and it was our target. Um, they, this is the 60th year of the UH Foundation. Um, they have gone back and done the math and they have raised, uh, we have raised together over a billion dollars for the University of Hawaii in that 60 years. Um, so this is an emphasis that I think we need to push on. Um, finally, let me mention um, a couple of great um, um, research findings that came out of UH. And I mentioned them, um, these are both, um, well, I mentioned them uh, both because they're great findings but also um, to highlight the communication work that we've been doing to get the word out about wonderful things going on. Um, one is the story that probably all of you saw about UH astronomers and Mauna Kea astronomers in general identifying over 100 exoplanets. These are the planets that are Earth-like, not necessarily inhabitable, but Earth-like uh, around the universe. Um, second is a uh, UH researcher, Joanne Yu, who's actually a local high school graduate uh, who identified the gene in insects that makes them waterproof, um, which is very interesting in thinking about pest control. Um, I'll stop there. Um, <laughs> but, but part of this is the way our communication team is really proactively reaching out with the media and getting these stories in the media, print, <laughs> television, and on all islands. And I think it's helping shape a different view of UH that I hope you feel, but I certainly feel in the community um, over these past couple of years.